takes the lead. And they will pick you up from oh, and Earnhardt. In NASCAR, there comes cases of moments, people, and organizations who on paper seemed as though they were destined for greatness. But for some reason or another, things did not work out in the end. When that happens, many would want to point the blame at a number of reasons why. But for this NASCAR fan and others, there's only one thing that we can ask. What happened? Today, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series comes to Chicago, Illinois, home to series title sponsor Craftsman and Chicago Motor Speedway, where we are set for the Sears Craftsman 175. Or actually, the clouds are clearing over downtown Chicago a few miles away. We have had rain for much of the morning, but the rains have moved away, and track drying has continued. The track is getting drier, and the skies are getting bluer. Earlier this year, NASCAR held its first ever street course race on the streets of Chicago. Chicago is known for lots of things. In fact, just recently I watched a cool video from Robert Field where he caught some massive carp in the river that goes through the city. Chicago also has plenty of food options, but they're most known for Chicago dogs complete with pickle and tomato and Chicago style deep dish pizza, aka a fancy lasagna. Detroit style for the win! But Chicago has also had a very rich sports history. The Bears, love them or hate them, have a long and vast history in the NFL, especially with the legendary coach Mike Ditka. The Cubbies are many baseball fans' favorite team. In fact, while I am not necessarily a huge baseball fan, they are probably my favorite team in the MLB too, and of course led by one of the GOATs of not just basketball but sports in general, Michael Jordan was responsible for building the Chicago Bulls into a dynasty team in the history of the NBA. And even before 2023, Chicago is and also has been a NASCAR city. Before racing on the streets of Chicago, NASCAR raced at Chicagoland Speedway, a 47,000 capacity, one and a half mile speedway located in Julia, Illinois from 2001 all the way to 2019. The first two races were won by Kevin Harvick in 2001 and 2002, which would be his only wins at Chicagoland. In 2010, David Rudiman and Michael Waltrip Racing broke through to pick up the victory as one of the track's more unique names in the win column. And in 2019, Alex Bowman stepped up to hold off Kyle Larson and earn his first of now seven NASCAR Cup Series victories at Chicagoland Speedway. Unfortunately, during the 2020 season, NASCAR would not race at Chicagoland due to the city and state's strict policies during the pandemic, and ultimately, further situations would prevent them from ever returning for the next few years, and ultimately NASCAR and the city of Chicago worked to bring a street course race to downtown Chicago, which for now leaves NASCAR's future on an established oval track in the Chicago market in question. Myself, along with some others, are in favor of a potential return to Chicagoland one day for NASCAR, but one thing that is for certain, NASCAR will never return to the once Chicago Motor Speedway, a one-mile flat oval located in Cicero, Illinois, which held races from 1999 to 2001. Officially known as the Chicago Motor Speedway at Sportsman Park, construction for the track started in 1997 per orders of the ownership group of Charles W. Bidwell III, Dwayne MacArthur, and legendary racing team owner Chip Ganassi. The site of this racetrack sits next to the Hawthorne Racecourse, which is a horse racing track which shares a similar shape to the Speedway, and is currently home to the Illinois Derby, because Sportsman's Park was the track's first official name when it was one of the area's premier homes to horse racing too. In fact, Chicago Motor Speedway is one of three tracks that have hosted races for both NASCAR and horse races, and it list also includes Dover Motor Speedway and the Syracuse Mile. Sportsman's Park and Hawthorne Racecourse's history as horse tracks go back for decades in their history together, but in 1997 the ownership group broke ground on the auto racing track portion of Sportsman's Park to be known as Chicago Motor Speedway. In 1999, after the final season of the old Sportsman's Park, the primary grandstand and infield were completely demolished to make way for the massive grandstand that was to follow for the set expansion plans. The track held kart races from 1999 to 2002, the Toyota Atlantic Series, and the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series raced there in 2000 and 2001. The track also held races for the American Speed Association, better known simply to most as ASA. In 2001, Chicagoland Speedway in Joliet was built with the hopes of attracting more racing fans to the new track, in addition to hosting upper-level racing series, which it was successful in doing from 2001 to 2019. 
When this happened, all Cicero races were subsequently moved to Juliet and the track closed the following year after the CART event, citing issues with financial conditions in the motorsports industry as the reason for ceasing operation. Another fun fact about Chicago Motor Speedway is that shortly before their closure, scenes from the movie Driven, a film about open-wheel racing starring Sylvester Stallone, were shot at Chicago Motor Speedway. In 2003, the city of Cicero purchased a track for $18 million, and by 2005, the main grandstands were torn down, but the track itself remained. And on October 31st, 2008, it was reported that contracts for the demolition of the remaining structures and track had been awarded, and the demolition of the remaining sportsman park structures and the track itself began on January 5th, 2009. The western portion of the site where Chicago Motor Speedway once sat is now a Wurtz Beverage Group distribution center, and the eastern portion is home to a Walmart Supercenter, effectively removing any last remains of the track, and part of the parking lot to the west across Laramie Avenue has since been converted into a public park. All in all, Chicago Motor Speedway at Sportsman Park carries a unique but short legacy in the history of Chicago's racing history. The two drivers to hold NASCAR victories at Chicago Motor Speedway are Joe Rutman and Scott Riggs, and this also very nearly was home to Kyle Busch's first win in the upper series of NASCAR, but Kyle Busch ran out of gas while leading with 12 laps to go in the 2001 Truck Series race at Chicago in his second start ever. Even with strong leadership like Chip Ganassi, it just wasn't meant to be for this racetrack to support larger races, whereas the new track in Joliet was a better fit for the time and as a race fan, all things considered, we likely got a much better racing product from Chicagoland Speedway than what we would have been provided by Chicago Motor Speedway. But that is the story of what happened and the tragedy of what was once Chicago Motor Speedway. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video. I'd like to apologize real quick here for being so delayed in producing another video like this. It's been a real battle this year to find free time and motivation to make videos like I used to, but after releasing that last Rise and Fall video, I've been reminded of exactly who I am and what I'm here to do, and I'm going to create the videos that you guys like and what I like to create. I don't care what the haters like to say, I am happy doing this type of content. I really appreciate everyone for supporting me and this channel for the last few years, and I've since started a second channel to pursue more passion projects on YouTube. So if you'd like to see some of my interest in trains and railroads, check out my second channel, Danny B Trains. I'd greatly appreciate your support to grow that channel as well. But until the next time you hear from me, I hope you enjoy today's video, and as always, I really do hope that you have a great day. Bye guys. Speedway and very hard carry back to 